Hello, everybody, and welcome to What Do Scientists Do? My name is Jessica, and today I'm joined by our very special guest. Could you give us your name and your pronouns, please? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is uh, Bill Parsons. I go by he, him, and I'm a spacecraft engineer at the Canadian Space Agency. That's very cool. So what do spacecraft engineers do? So my work specifically is with the spacecraft operations engineering team. So we run all of Canada's uh, spacecrafts. So we have six or seven total uh, satellites that we make sure are always up and running, making sure that all the science instruments for all their sp different specific jobs are always up to, to par, top notch, and getting the, the most out of their capabilities. Cool. And your specific job, what do you do? So uh, on a daily basis, I'll look at uh, telemetry, which is um, kind of information about the satellite and its health and all of the different metrics of, oh, is the temperature too high or are we you know, spinning too fast or are we going to collide with uh, another spacecraft, for example? We look at all that kind of stuff and make sure that everything is, is A-OK -okay for the satellite. We run uh, routine activities to kind of improve the satellites as well. So we're always looking to, to make things better. And we do a lot of uh, improvements on the ground as well, the, the ground meaning like our operations space. So we are constantly writing uh, new scripts and algorithms to improve our performance. We're looking at introducing some AI eventually. We're looking at consolidating all of our operations to be more streamlined for all the different missions, because even though they're very specific in their own tasks, um, we want everything to be kind of uh, streamlined together. So we're, we're always looking for basically improvements, but then also just making sure that everything's kind of working um, as it should. Cool. So you mentioned the different tasks that those satellites have. What are some of the tasks of Canada's satellites? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to talk about uh, what Canada has to offer for, for aerospace. We've got quite a few really interesting satellites. We've got um, NEOSAT, which uh, stands for Near Earth Object Surveillance Satellite. So that takes pictures uh, kind of outward away from Earth. So we look at asteroids that are going by, space debris, uh, exoplanets. Uh, if you've heard of the DART mission, the, the recent mission where an old spacecraft was kind of flown into an asteroid, uh, we took a couple pictures of that as well, which was really cool. Uh, we've got SciSat, so Science Satellite. It's used to kind of better understand the chemical, chemical composition of our atmosphere. We look at measuring the depletion of the ozone layer um, and all the different kind of chemicals that are new and being added to the atmosphere to make sure that they're okay. Uh, we kind of mostly focus over Canada and the Arctic. Uh, we have uh, RadarSat 2 and we have RadarSat Constellation Mission. So those are satellites that look to Earth and we take pictures of uh, Earth, say, for monitoring flooding we do a lot of like uh, disaster uh, mitigation to make sure that that our coastlines are safe we do things like checking for um, oil spills for example if they're spreading we can we can really map out where that's going kind of fix the problem uh, another really cool one we have that's kind of upcoming it's uh, one we're working on figuring out the specifics for in the next year or two is called keysat uh, it's quantum encryption that's the, the key is actually a QE. And so that is work towards quantum computing, which admittedly is a bit over my head, but I'll be more on the kind of operation of the satellite itself. But uh, I'm very excited for that to be added to our fleet. Do you have a favorite satellite? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say NeoSat uh, for two different reasons. One, because it's a bit uh, strapped together, I'll say. It's the least well-functioning satellite that we have. Um, and what that means is we get a lot of uh, issues with it, or there's a lot of things that I get to kind of fix, or I get to kind of put my hand in into and, and say, oh, we need to improve that. Or um, I think there's been two papers that uh, my team has, um, not me specifically, but my uh, colleagues have written about some of the things that we've done on NeoSet that have kind of come out of the work and, and become new um, new science research because of these issues that we've had to fix in creative ways, for example. Um, so I, I definitely say NeoSat is interesting in that regard. And then also just because of 
the fact it's our, our only satellite that's pointing away from Earth. Um, it's the one that's really getting to see like the exoplanets, the space debris, uh, asteroids, all that thing, all those things, um, which I think is going to become more and more important uh, as as time goes on. I think uh, space debris, space debris specifically, is kind of a a growing issue that that needs to be looked at. And um, having NeoSat in our arsenal is uh, excellent to kind of help combat that. That's super cool. I love how your favorite one is in some ways the most broken one that you just get to use as a learning experience. (laughs) Engineers never want to look toward, never want any of our stuff to fail. We always want it to work great, but honestly, the way we have the most fun is when things do go wrong and we get to get in there and and really uh, show what we're, what we're paid for, what we're worth. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Well, that's very cool. How did you end up deciding that this was the field you wanted to work in? So I've kind of always been interested in inventions and kind of tinkering with things uh, from a young age. I, I always kind of uh, would go into my dad's garage and um, just mess around with things, taping them together to see what I could make. And, and that kind of just pushed me towards engineering as a, as a career. And uh, I was always good at math and science. And so it just made sense to go into engineering. Um, I did my bachelor, my undergrad degree at Dalhousie. So shout out to Dalhousie. Uh, in mechanical engineering. And throughout that, I kind of learned more specifically that I, I was really interested in aerospace as a, a degree or as a, a career eventually. And so I went on to Carleton University and did a master's in aerospace engineering. That kind of narrowed my focus a bit more and gave me the, the expertise to, to pursue that as a career. And then now I find myself at the CSA as a, a spacecraft slash satellite engineer. Well. So you started out in mechanical. The stuff that you do right now, is that more similar to mechanical engineering, which is like mechanical engineering, I think of stereotypically as things like cars and how does an engine work and how do you put together all these moving parts? Or have you kind of gone into a different area of engineering? Uh, That's a great question because I kind of think of uh, aerospace as the border between mechanical and electrical. And you're definitely right. I've, I've kind of steered myself more towards almost software engineering, where I do I write a lot of uh, coding, and we do like a lot of scripts and um, sending commands to the spacecraft. It's all it's all done on computers, but it is very important, I think, to have a good understanding physically of of what you're actually doing. So if I'm say reading a telemetry of of the spacecraft, the temperature is too hot. Like I need to understand physically what that means and how it's going to affect the system. And I think going the mechanical route really grounded me in understanding uh, the world in a more physical sense. I've always struggled to to kind of understand things, electrical magnetism. It's all it's all magic to me. Whereas mechanical is is very um, grounded in in the laws of physics, and and I can get a good understanding of what's going on. Um, so I think it's uh, definitely pushed towards more software electrical but with that kind of grounding of mechanical of understanding like what is actually happening to the spacecraft physically because we are you know, in, in the real world. We're not in the, the magnetism realm. Um, we have to understand like what is actually happening to our objects. That's cool. I love anything that's a little bit interdisciplinary and where you can do a little bit of everything. Absolutely. That always makes things more interesting in my opinion. So my next question for you, is you've done all this cool stuff. You've done mechanical engineering. You now work for the CSA, which um, I don't remember if we defined at the beginning as the Canadian Space Agency. I'll just let everybody know when we say CSA, we're talking about the Canadian Space Agency, which is the Canadian equivalent of NASA and which often works with NASA. NASA is just, I think, a more internationally um, known name. It's just so big. But the CSA does a lot with NASA. What's your favorite engineering related thing or science related thing that you've ever done i think probably something a bit more simple you'd think i would i would have a a large answer of one of my projects um but one that kind of immediately comes to mind um, was one when i was actually younger where uh, me and my sisters and my dad uh, all worked together and and built this uh, small rocket and uh, went to a abandoned, not abandoned, but an empty parking lot in uh, Burnside, and uh, kind of shot it up. We um, 
really learned a lot about like not inventing, but being able to make something and seeing it work. Uh, it really got me interested in, in science and engineering and, and kind of it's probably that initial spark of, wow, like aerospace engineering is really cool. And um, I think that probably influenced some of my decisions later on. So that's probably my favorite just because it, it means a lot to me and kind of helps navigate my trajectory, I guess. Yeah, I love that because that's our entire goal, both making this podcast and at Supernova, where we do hands-on science for kids who, all the way from like primary to grade 12, but we are trying to help people find that initial spark. So that's our whole goal. And I'm glad that one of your fondest experiences is that initial spark. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this to you already, but we have the Atlas program where high school students from throughout Atlantic Canada can apply to come to Dalhousie during the summer for two weeks, free of charge, travel is included, everything is covered. So anybody should be eligible to do it in Atlantic Canada. And they get to design and build satellites and they do launch rockets at some point, I believe. Um, And that reminded me of that. Yeah, I absolutely urge uh, any kids listening to just just get out there and start like getting hands on with science, like uh, reading books, watching videos, and, and listening to this podcast is uh, is amazing. But where I think you really get will get the spark is kind of getting involved and seeing things uh, kind of come to fruition right in front of you. Um, that's what really really did it for me. Yeah, my I have a very similar childhood memory of extracting DNA from a banana um, wow. at a science workshop in at school we do them here at supernova as well the dna extraction and then i went into microbiology that's amazing Um, yeah so i think i remember hearing where uh our our dna genome is about 50 percent the same as a banana something along those lines i've always yeah i think it's like between 50 and 55 yeah (laughs) yeah so i think if you look at us in the gorilla it's like 99 percent the same or 99.9 anyway that was a bit of an aside, but I, I love that it being your favorite science experience. Do you have something that you think that everybody should know about aerospace engineering or space systems engineering, uh, yeah, I guess? Definitely. And I think it's a bit broad, um, to, more towards just science engineering, um, maybe engineering more specifically. But uh, I think it gets a, a bit of a, a kind of a stereotype or a bad rap of being very nitty gritty and you're, you know, you're doing tons of crazy math and it, it's only the only one way to get this thing to work. But one thing that I want people to understand about engineering and, and uh, aerospace engineering is that there's so much room for creativity uh, and imagination. And, and that's kind of what I love most about my job is all of these specific uh, tasks that I'm doing. I'm writing a, a program for something. There's always so much wiggle room in terms of how I can put my own spin on it, where I bring my experience and, and my skills to the table um, and kind of tailor it to how I see things um, to be done. And so I, I just think uh, I want people to understand that there's, there's a lot of creativity and imagination in science and engineering where you might get the idea that it's a bit nitty gritty or looking at numbers and data all the time. There's a, certainly a, a good amount of that. But it's it's definitely interwoven with that um, with that imagination and creativity. I love that. I totally agree. It's so easy to get caught up in the amount of math you might have to take in high school to go into engineering and things like that. But it's easy to forget that engineers are inventors, basically, right? Like if you think of exactly. an inventor, that's what an engineer is. You might have technicians and folks who help out with more of the nitty gritty as well, right? Yeah, definitely. There's always people uh, within any team that kind of have their specific roles. I mean, for our scenario in operations, we have engineers, we have uh, technicians, we have like the manager. So there are always, there's always specific areas that people focus on. You kind of work together as a team. Um, but I think in any role, um, there's always a level of, of creativity to it. Cool. Well, Thank you so much for joining me today. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention? I guess I would just say to, to get involved again, uh, to kind of get out there and, and start um, seeing things hands-on. Obviously, be safe, but don't be afraid to kind of get creative and get weird and, and start uh, kind of learning what you do and don't like at an early age. I think it's so amazing to, to figure that out. and That way you can kind of set yourself up for 
your career and and what school you might want to go to and, and all, all those things. Okay, I think that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was uh, great to talk about my work and, and hopefully uh, I was able to inspire some uh, some listeners. Thank you so much for joining us, Bill. And as always, a big, big thank you to everybody listening. For more science fun, updates on future guests, and more, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ScientistStewPod. Do you have a question that you'd like answered by an expert? Send us an email at whatdoscientistsdo at superstaff.ca and we might answer your question on the show. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you next episode. Bye for now. This podcast was made by Supernova at Dalhousie University, a network member of Actua. For more information on our summer camps, workshops, and more, check out supernova.dal.ca.